Nintendo Life, and today we're here to share with you our review of Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater on the Nintendo Switch. Now, this review was originally written by Stuart Jip for NintendoLife.com, but was reworked into this video by me. If you were to see a ghost hanging around, what would be your first instinct? Would it be to pull out a camera and take a picture of it? Or even pull out your phone? I guess maybe, but probably not. I think it's fair to say that realistically, most of us would just run. Well, in Fatal Frame, Maiden of Black Water, or as it's also known in Europe, Project Zero, that would be the exactly right idea to have, if they happen to at least be the dangerous kind of spirits that you'd want to banish. Now this camera that we're talking about is no ordinary camera either. The device wielded by the Fatal Framer, which is a term that we made up, is the Camera Obscura, which is a term that we didn't make up. This captures more than just treasured memories, however. If utilized carefully, it can allow its wielder to capture spirits, which in practice is effectively the same thing as killing them. Again because they're ghosts and they're already dead, but wow, well, okay. Move along kids, afterlife please, I've got people to find. Maiden of Blackwater is a port remake of the Wii U installment of the long running Fatal Frame series. Although perhaps the scariest thing about the original release these days is its price on the secondhand market. So it's good of Koei Tecmo then to re-release the game for Switch and to do such a solid job of it. If you played it already on Nintendo's previous console, where the gamepad was the camera, there's little point in revisiting it here, but that neat mechanic has been retrofitted to work on a single screen as well as one could hope. Following the journey of three main protagonists and one secret-ish one from another series, shh, you'll take the camera obscura into all sorts of creepy places that you really wouldn't want to go normally in order to solve an extremely bleak mystery involving suicidal shrine maidens and the titular black water, a curse that feeds into both the narrative and gameplay. Now, your playable character doesn't want to get wet. If you're soaked to the bone, you're more susceptible to the curse, and if you come down with it, your health bar is going to drain constantly until you either use an item to warm up or eliminate all the spirits in the area and the latter is easier said than done. While you're normally playing in third person mode, bringing out the camera obscura naturally switches your view to first person, giving you a much more significant blind spot. You've got to frame your target and snap it until it vanishes, taking care not to run out of film. There are different lenses and film type to choose from, which adds a layer of strategy to the already demanding action, but it's the fun kind of frantic. One snap usually isn't enough to take down a ghost either, but taking pictures causes chunks of their ghostly essence to fly out of them, and if you can frame them all, you're going to have a good chance to banish the ghost properly. If you happen to have multiple ghosts in the frame when you achieve what the game calls Shutter Chance, well, that's just even better as well. With careful, skilled play, you can absolutely decimate a horde of phantoms with just a couple of swiftly handled presses of the ZR button. You're also able to initiate the titular Fatal Frame bonus by taking a photo when a spirit is attacking, which is a risky but highly damaging move. When you're not snapping glamour photos of a specter, you'll find yourself engaged in fairly typical survival horror exploration. Making your way through each environment is pretty simple with relatively basic controls. You can use your flashlight by holding ZR, which will allow your current character to follow spirits in order to track the next part of the story. It's quite linear, but in a way that suits the spook show atmosphere. Less ideal, however, is the camera, which at times can feel pretty clunky. It feels as though the right stick barely has has any effect on it, and when surrounded by ghoulies, you'll instinctively want to spin it around when you very much can't. You can run and quick turn, but the camera still takes its sweet time catching up with you. Yes, it adds to the overall panic, but in a more frustrating manner. The episodic structure of the narrative makes Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater easy to jump in and out of, with episodes replayable to get higher ranks and gain more currency to unlock different costumes for each character. These of course fall within the ranks of novelty, but impassioned gamers will be disappointed at the removal of some of the costumes found previously in the Wii U version. 
including the Nintendo-specific ones. Visually, it's all very striking and effective, and it goes without saying, but Fatal Frame sings on the OLED Switch with its deeper, darker blacks. Unfortunately, its performance is less than impressive though. While generally an acceptable 30 FPS, we found that there was quite a lot of hitching, brief irritating freezes that wrench you out of any kind of tension you may be experiencing. We're hopeful that these annoying little bugs will be ironed out in a day one patch that promises to improve loading times and fix bugs, but in the meantime, they are a little bit of a downer. There's a lot to like about Fatal Frame Maiden of Black Water, and while we didn't find it overly scary, it does an incredibly good job at being eerie. You'll see ghosts out of the corner of your eye, and when you check, they'll be gone. It's oddly cozy and non-stressful for a horror game, because your camera is such an effective weapon and the combat it propagates is too action-packed to really let any dread sink in. That's not necessarily a bad thing though, as we found the earlier PlayStation 2 installments of the series were more interested in actively frightening the player. If you get absorbed in the storyline, which is easy to do as the episodic structure makes just one more area a compelling prospect, you'll find a good 15 or so hours of game here, and much more if you decide you need to go and get higher ranks as you improve your camera obscura with upgrades and other treats. So with performance problems aside, this game's a real winner and worth snapping up if you're a horror fan who missed it on Wii U. We here at Nintendo Life give Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater on Nintendo Switch an 8 out of 10. Now to sort of mimic what Stuart said in this review, I very much have been enjoying my time with this game as well. Uh, there are a few things though that I did want to bring up. Uh, I definitely do agree that the controls feel a little bit clunky at times. The camera sometimes, it can just be a little slow, just a little sluggish. And I've also noticed that you can't really fully, like when I get into a new area in a game that's beautiful and I just kind of want to soak it all in, I love just rotating the camera 360 degrees around the character so I can kind of see everything and see the character in this world. And in Fatal Frame, when you do that your character kind of like sidesteps and walks in circles around themselves and it's it's whatever but it's just just a minor thing i suppose i also noticed that from time to time there's this big wooded area i can't remember what it's referred to in the game but i noticed I found myself getting lost in the woods fairly often, and in turn, uh, I would check my map. And you can do that by pressing the, uh, I believe it's the start button or maybe the minus button. One of them opens up your map. And I found I was doing that over and over and over again because I would put myself on the right track and I would follow this path and... I would be like trying to go to an area that I hadn't explored on the map yet maybe. And because to my knowledge, maybe there is one, I could not find a mini map option in the game. And I think... I think a mini map would sort of take away a bit of the survival horror feel, but not having a mini map caused me to continuously over and over again go back to the menu. And if like if somebody else was watching me play this game, I would have felt terribly bad because I revisited that map so many times that it probably would have been frustrating to anyone who would have been watching me play the game. However, if you do happen to get lost though, you can hold the either the R button or the ZR button and a silhouette of a character will appear and you can actually follow that in the direction of the area that you're supposed to go. I just really liked using the map though myself. One thing that I really, really love about it is that Oftentimes you'll be walking around in an area, you might turn and see like a, a ghost out of the corner of your eye or like you might be walking, you might walk into a new room and you'll see a ghost for three or four seconds. And in that time, you can actually pull out your camera quick and take a picture of them. And you're kind of like almost making a collection of these different ghosts that you encounter and you'll you'll eventually start to learn more about them. Even same with uh, the, the ghosts that you actually fight. Once you defeat them, they'll, their spirit will kind of linger for a few seconds. You can actually go up and touch them and that will give you sort of like a flashback memory sequence to uh, like their last moments on earth as as humans and you got to kind of get to see traditionally from what I've found it's been like a really gra gruesome murder scene or you'll you'll just find out how they how they died uh, but it's still super interesting nonetheless. I think the graphical and audio design of the game is excellent as well. It really all comes together. The the lighting, the way that it falls through the trees, and sometimes you might see it catching on the like on the moonlight on a waterfall. And while there isn't really a whole lot of music to the game that I've noticed, I appreciate just the ambiance of the of the sound effects that that happen when you're walking around in the woods or if you're running through the through a, a bush or if you're walking up a, a dirt path you'll know you know you'll notice your footsteps sound different there's just a lot of attention to detail in little parts like that
So, of course, feel free to let us know in the comments down below if you ever played Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater on Wii U back in the day, or let us know if you're going to be picking it up. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, then why don't you go ahead and pull out that camera obscura of your own and snap a picture of that subscribe button. Capture it forever. And then ring that notification bell to be notified whenever we put up a new video. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Zeon from Nintendo Life. Stay safe out there, and we will see you next time. Oh,